Welcome back to Today on the Vineyard. I'm John Cleese, and I'm now sitting down with Andy Abrams Wilson, who is the director of the documentary on Lyme disease, Under Our Skin, and Susan Swartz, who's actually been doing a lot to get information out about the disease and also has actually suffered and continues, I think, at times to suffer from Lyme disease as well. So welcome to the show, both of you. Appreciate you coming. We should start out by saying this. This film actually showed last night in Chilmark, right? And it was at a pretty amazing reception standing that, room only that's fantastic mm -hmm. that's fantastic so and as you know um, Andy maybe you don't know are you surprised by actually how prevalent the disease is here on the island I, I wouldn't say that I'm surprised I'm, I'm now used to it what I'm what surprises me is that given the prevalence of the disease on this island people still know so little about the disease right. and why do you think that is well I mean, I, I guess I'd want um, the viewers to come see the film because I think we answer that question to some extent. Um, there is a lot of debate about about the disease. Um, there isn't there isn't a lot of consensus within the medical community, and um, quite frankly, the disease has the reality of the disease and the extensiveness of the disease has been squashed. And did you know that going into doing the film, or is that something you sort of learned in the process? Cause the, and actually, how did the whole genesis, anyway, of you two getting together do this? All right, I think well, that's, I'll, 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 yeah. well, I have. I live with chronic Lyme, and um, ever since I've been living with it, uh, Jim and I have been looking for a way to not only help people, but to educate people about Lyme. And so we've been involved in documentaries, and we were very fortunate to meet up with Andy and be able to help with the production of the film. Now, was Andy actually doing something with Lyme, or you thought he'd be a good person no, to no, tackle no. He, this project he for He was you? well into the project. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, and, and I, I think what, what originally got me interested was, was basically a curiosity. It was a, yeah. I, I call it a naive curiosity. Um, when I, a, f a friend of mine in California got very sick with Lyme, she was diagnosed with MS and then ALS and then eventually Lyme disease. And I was shocked that, that Lyme could do that. My twin sister had had Lyme disease years before and I didn't take it seriously, like most people. And so I was kind of the typical person um, that um, knew, may, may have known somebody with Lyme, um, but didn't take it seriously, thought it was sort of the lazy person's disease. And so I was shocked. I was shocked that Lyme disease could do that. And the more I, I sort of delved into it, the more shocked I was. And, and I never could have imagined the, the extent of the suffering and the, um, the untapped need, the, mm. the, the need for the, the story to be told. And, so, and, and also the controversial with how the doctors approach it. Well, I think that's what's the most amazing thing, because I also have had long-term Lyme, and I guess you know, in the film, I'm still always confused whether or not I always have it or bouts of it again. But I think the hardest thing was trying to to have a disease that you're fighting the doctors about. You have enough going on, but that's what I think is so amazing. And then the repercussions that the doctors themselves had by trying to do anything alternative to sort of what the standard procedure was. Yeah, well, we, we say that, that, that Lyme disease is sort of the canary in the coal mine of, of, our, of the failings of our healthcare system. And it really does lay bare um, so many of the problems with our, our, our medical research system, our insurance systems. Um, Lyme disease is a perfect case study. And um, I think so in covering the Lyme disease issue, we're not only uncovering the problem, the, the big problem with Lyme disease, but also, also the many problems uh, with our healthcare system. Well, it amazes me that, you know, once, just in the medical establishment, once somebody publishes something and says that's the way it is, how difficult, and I think the film does a great job of this, to reopen that up and say, well, wait, that, that's not right. When did we, why did we get to this conclusion before we haven't really even delved into it as much as, you know, we should have? So, Susan, does it feel good to feel, as I know you've been battling this a long time and talking a lot about it, does it feel good to get something out there in public now? It feels so good, John. And we're trying to start a Lyme Foundation here on the island. Diane Reddick is heading that. And tonight at the film, we'll be packing up, passing out packages of information about Lyme alternatives, medicines, mm -hmm. little tick cards, and um, it's so, going to be very informative. So is your goal to finally have a center that sort of gets out all yes. of this alternative yes. information stuff? education. So, so yeah. key. 
And it does feel like, I know that it's spreading and people talk about it in the movie, but it has really spread across the country, down the coast. So what felt like a very isolated sort of southern New England thing has really moved along at a pretty it's, fast It's speed. worldwide. Yeah. Which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And I also think the film, and people come and watch it, is the connection that they start to allude to with other sort of more common right. diseases. Yeah. Well, the, uh, there's a lot of myths that we're, that we're trying yeah. to, to, um, to challenge in the film. And one of them is that geographical myth that it's only in New England. In reality, it's in every state of the country. It's um, all across the world. And um, you might not know it because it's not reported in, in many countries. If you look at the, the official uh, map, the CDC map, it, it stops at the Canadian border. And, you know, I can't in imagine... In terms of that reports that come in about the disease. Interesting. Yes, and it stops at the Mexico border. So, so it is... As, as if the ticks stop at the border, right? Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> they can't get there. Right, Jesus. exactly. Exactly. Can't cross the border. Um, so it so is a worldwide issue, and, and yet the rest of the world looks to the United States for help. And um, as we show in the film, um, we don't have the answers here. Right. Right. Yeah, and I do think that is surprising. There really aren't a lot of conclusions still yet, right? This is still a journey to figure out exactly what it is. There's so many symptoms of it, right, that have to be treated. We do want to get out that today, if you haven't seen the film, it's at 3 p.m., correct, at the theater in Edgartown on Main Street. Um, $10 charge, but get there early, because if it was packed in Showmark last night, I'm sure it'll be packed here in Edgartown. But then, really interesting to me is at 5 o'clock, you guys have a, um, an, is it an open discussion that's going to happen at the yes. Whaling Church? Um, we brought in several of the doctors uh, from the film, and uh, they will be here, Andy will be here to answer questions, to give out some more information, and it's free. That's so it's 5 o'clock at the Whaling That's Church. Great. Now where does, um, I know that you're working a little bit with Plum, because I think we're showing this film in our other markets, which I think not only visited by people here, but also are experiencing some of the same outbreaks of Lyme. Where else does this film, where do we go now with this film? Like what is the, you know, what do you hope that this film sort of generates in terms of a movement or policy? Well, we keep, as we were editing this, we would, we would say that we wanted the film to be a water cooler film, which means that people in offices, when they went to the water cooler, that they would chat about what they just saw in the film. And I don't know whether we've reached that yet, but... Um, well, we don't we, have any water coolers here on the vineyard, so oh, that's but, a uh, perhaps... We'll yeah, have right. to think of a new maybe metaphor. Maybe in the big cities, right. right. Um, um, <laughs> maybe when people go sailing or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. But... Um, uh, you know, we want it to change. Yeah. We want it to, to create change. Right. And um, we want it to be the thing that sort of blows the lid off the cover. Yeah. Well, I think it's fantastic that it's out there. Again, struggled with trying to figure it out myself. And Tina Miller, who you'll probably meet tonight later on. I mean, Tina grew up on the island, general manager of Plum, and she always remembers growing up that the doctors always knew there was stuff that was happening to the kids out here. And she got Lyme and got Bell's palsy. And, you know, it's interesting. All That long ago, I mean, we're talking, you know, Tina's probably 40 back 40 years, you know, when those kids were young, that that was happening here on the island, but they didn't know quite what it was. And also, I think, um, as I say in the film, didn't quite understand the extent of the additional things that now come from yes. that. So maybe it was a little bit less before. Yeah. But so amazing. And thank you guys for getting the story out, because it really is important. So again, 3 o'clock um, at the Edgartown Theater, ten, uh, $10. And then at 5 o'clock, the Old Whaling Church for a forum on Lyme disease. Very important. You guys should get out there. So thanks so much for coming. And we appreciate it. Thank Susan, you. Susan, thanks for doing this. Yeah. Appreciate it so much. All right, stay tuned. There's a lot more to come here today on the video. We'll be right back. Thank you.